and we'll walk you through our presentation here uh, shortly. Thanks for joining. Um, today's uh, so today's presentation we're going to uh, cover a couple things. One is uh, Dave and I will introduce ourselves real quickly. Um, we're going to cover a little bit of history because it's it's tough to talk about a new way of planning without talking about how did we get there. So we're going to spend a little few minutes talking about the history, and then uh, we'll go into what dynamic planning is and what we're seeing in the marketplace amongst companies large and small, and um, and what they're doing in regards to dynamic planning. And David's gonna, do, gonna give you a good overview of adaptive insights and, and talk about the technology that we believe salute, that, that really supports dynamic planning in a big way. And so that will be the agenda for today's discussion. So if we start out uh, with introductions, um, real briefly, again, my name is Scott Wallace. Um, I've got about 38 years of experience helping clients uh, fix their budgeting, planning, and forecasting problems. I got a lot of that experience in my time at the Big Four. I was at Deloitte Consulting for over 16 years uh, as a partner in our CFO services practice. So again, spent a lot of times with clients of all sizes dealing with their, F, with their budget planning forecasting problems. And I'm a, gra a, a proud graduate of the University of Minnesota, so that's where the 10 comes from for the Big Ten. And yes, we did make the NCAA dance this week, so we'll be playing on Thursday morning. I'm looking forward to a victory there. David? I think there actually might be a 10 seed so that might work for a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm David Grand. Uh, I've been with eCapital Advisors for uh, over eight years now. Um, I've worked uh, in you know, many different industries, over seven different industries, specifically uh, retail and uh, CPG. And I've worked with over five different planning technologies as well. Thanks, thanks David. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about how did we get here. So the way, to, the way I wanna talk about that is, you know, planning, budget, and forecasting has always been um, always been a big, a big challenge for everyone. It was an event-driven annual process uh, a lot of manual effort, a lot of uh, extra effort by everybody in the organization. So intensive, in, uh, you know, intensive, time-consuming, resource-consuming process, and it was broke. And everybody was always looking for the solution. And I, I, you know, when I ran across this this cartoon, I thought, gosh, that that really does describe what people were up against and trying to find a better way. And might as well just throw the cash in the buckets because. It was such a difficult process and spending those overnights, you know, 12, 13 hours consolidating spreadsheets only to find out that somebody put in a spreadsheet uh, with an error in it or had changed something and uh, we had to start all over again. So I've been there out in the trenches doing that. And the other part of it is not only was the technology a challenge, but you really had process issues. Um, I worked with a client while I was at, uh, at Deloitte they had a six-month annual planning process, five, six, five to six iterations of their budget, um, planning 4,000 plus raw materials. It was it was such a mess, and I remember the vice president of finance looking at me and saying, "I can't invest in the technology right now. Can you help us?" And so we really started to look at their process and found out that the crux of it, they had a couple of fundamental issues. They weren't communicating their targets well and weren't bringing in the right stakeholders to the table to talk about what the targets were going to be and how they were going to achieve them. So we did a lot of that setting up review meetings and dividing up the budget between revenue type meetings and cost type meetings. We took the, the we, we did an analysis of the raw materials and instead of planning 4,000 of them, we got it down to three because it really drove 85 to 90% of their cost. And we were able to get their process down in the first pass to three months in one iteration. So it's not always technology, but it's a combination of process and technology. And so the planning processes have not been great. When you think about how did, how did we get there, um, back when I started, and, and I date myself, but back in the, in the 70s, we did use paper to do our budgets, the nine column accounting paper. And if you look across, or the 12 column, uh, when you look across at the changes, changes were always driven either by changes in how people wanted to plan or changes in the technology. You know, of course, first thing to hit was the, uh, was the Lotus 1, 2, 3, but quickly replaced by Excel. And Excel has stayed the course over all these years as the median for business planning, albeit not the best median, it's still involved in a lot of businesses. 
But then I saw a paradigm in my career uh, when the datum came to be, and a datum was the first really group planning application where everybody was working in the same application, inputting information. It was consolidated automatically. It allowed you to, to see into the uh, the workflow, you knew who was in and who was not, you could set targets, you could see good reporting. So that changed the game and so it really started changing how people started thinking about budgeting in general and it really shifted things. And then you had all the consolidation going on. You had Cognos, IBM, you know, I, uh, Cognos buying uh, a datum, IBM buying Cognos, Hyperion came along and Oracle bought them. And I think we went through the last 15 years or so of just getting more complex and more costly planning solutions, and we really didn't change the fundamentals. It just became more complex and more costly to implement. Well, you've got some cloud solutions like Adaptive that have been around a while, that have perfected and moved up from what I would say is a tier two, tier three type technology to a tier one technology, but grew up in the cloud and really has focused on how do I connect the organization? And we're gonna talk more about that. But I believe there's a paradigm shift happening now with people looking at more continuous dynamic planning with tools like Adaptive. You know, it's interesting um, you know, when you look back and you think about where CFOs are today, I ran across a study that was taken in 2018. Over a thousand CFOs responded, 67% of them said that their people, their people were bogged down in legacy processes with legacy technology and didn't have time to innovate. However, 85% of those same group said innovation was a priority. So you've got these things going on with CFOs and finance teams that are kind of in conflict with one another. And I think now everybody, I think that indicates why people are starting to look at, is there a better way to plan my business and how do I get out of these massive event-driven things like an annual plan or a quarterly forecast and become more agile to my business changes? And I think so the desire is there, and I believe now the, the, the impetus is there for the change. You know, and then finally, when you look at where we've been, where are you today? Uh, where does your company fall? Um, you know, in all my work working with, at Deloitte with the Fortune 50 or working in mid-market companies, I'd say most of my clients have fallen in the defined stage. You know, they, they're using Excel, they've got some pretty good processes, um, they've got some analytics but not great analytics, but they're not moving the needle up into advanced and leading. And I think that's why companies find themselves kind of in that middle spot. But I think that, as I mentioned before, the pent up desire is to start moving up and to start doing it in a better way. So ask yourself where you fall. Uh, and where does your company fall? So we're gonna we're gonna switch gears and really talk about where we're going. Um, and I think one of the things that we're starting to see is a shift towards dynamic planning, and it's really versus static static planning or event driven planning. And I think it's driven by three primary reasons. I think first of all, businesses are dealing with constant change. Not only is change happening, but data is available 24/7. There's communication going on 24 seven. People are dispersed around the globe in a lot easier way than they were in the past. And they just need to be able to be more agile uh, because their businesses are impacted around the clock every day of the week. And the time of planning in silos where you used to do a plan and if you were in operations, you only worried about your operations plan and submitted your information or if you were in the sales side and you submitted your demand forecast, you submitted it without anyone else seeing it other than your management and finance. And that went across all functions within an organization. And I think that's got to change. We've got to share information so that if you're in operations and dealing with supply chain and something significant happens to a supplier or a raw material or something going on there that I need to sell to my, my clients, I need the demand side and the sell, selling people to understand that happen, and I need to be connected with them. And finally, how do I allocate people, process, and technology resources the right way across my organization if all I see is information by silos? 
And I used to say it was awesome to be in finance because finance was the center of all uh, of the universe of the company because that's where all these plans, all these siloed plans came in to be, and it was our job to figure out not only how to consolidate them, but how to communicate things that were going on in the business because not a lot of times those functional leaders didn't talk or a problem would come up and it would take over a week for it to reach the right person, to get in the right set of people in the right meeting to make a decision. And so that's driving dynamic planning. But it's a challenge because planning is a challenge. It's hard to coordinate amongst stakeholders. It's hard to make sure that they're not, they're not sticking themselves in their, in, their, uh, in their silos. There's a need to be collaborative and that's part of what dynamic planning brings. It's hard to maintain complex models and create a single source of the truth. And not every function needs to have the same level of complexity in their model. Some might be much more simple than others, and yet they still have to be connected. So it's got to be a comprehensive capability that matches the needs of all functions or all business units within a company. And finally, it's hard to update plans quickly and keep them current because it's an event-driven or it's spreadsheet driven or it's, it's a disconnected planning process and it's got to be a continuous process so that if something happens to me over in supply or in R&D or in sales, I put that change in and everybody in the ecosystem sees what that chain is, change is doing, sees the change and understands what it's doing, maybe to them, maybe to the company, and finance, of course, sees the results of all that from a financial impact. So this need to be um, continuous is really important. But those are the challenges that are out there for companies, but I think they're starting to address them. What we believe is that planning should be done by people closest to the closest to the business. It should be done by the people that are in operations or in sales at the sales level so that we get the information that's closest and most executable uh, to the business that will drive the most change. And it's got to be easy to do and quick to, quick to make decisions. So it's got to provide you information that is actionable, not just information. The information you can take action on, which is a key to any dashboard or analytics or insight that you provide. If you're just providing it for information's sake, it's really not useful. It's got to be able to drive decisions or create action because of what, what, the, uh, what the user is seeing. And finally, it, all of this has got to be informed by that good reporting and analytics that drive that action. And so that's what we believe you need as a planning process and a planning system to go along with that process. <clears throat> Dynamic planning is, as I've said, collaborative, but it's also got to be easy. Your users have to have a good user experience. They can't be struggling with how to use the system, how to find the numbers, how to see the analytics. So it's got to be easier to use. It's got to be comprehensive, and yet it's got to be powerful. So from the most simple to the most complex business unit or function, it's got to be able to manage all of that in a very powerful way and be able to stay connected at all times so that it's not separate, it's not separate processes, it's not separate uh, jobs that run to update things. It's all continuous and connected within the same system. And finally, it's got to be continuous and it's got to be fast. If you're going to connect all the functions, all the business units together, and at the same time, when a change is made, it's impacting everything in the planning system, whether it's the dashboard, the numbers, the summary, the you know, at the consolidated level, all of that changes the minute I input that change in volume, in, in um, price, in cost. The minute I put that in, it's got to be fast enough to change, change across the system. And finally, <clears throat> there's something to keep in mind is that everybody plans. And that's what we're trying to get to, a, a situation where everybody's engaged in the planning process. There's no longer event-driven annual plan or a quarterly forecast. Now, you, you might say, well, I, I still have to have that. I still have to have a quarterly forecast or I still have to have a budget. That's true, but in a continuous planning process, it's a snapshot at a point in time. So if I decide in December I need to take a snapshot of next year's 12 months, uh, that's my annual budget. If I need to take a snapshot at the end of the first quarter, you know, that's my, my uh, second quarter forecast. So there's still a capability there to take these snapshots for your stakeholders that want those, but it doesn't stop. 
It continuously moves and everybody's engaged. And so you'll hear from us, at least, that everybody plans and it's going to be an active, continuous process of planning. So we're going to have some time at the end to, to uh, have some questions if there are any. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to David who's going to walk you through a solution that we believe is designed to support dynamic, continuous planning. Thank you, Scott. Uh, so we just talked about how organizations need a solution that is easy, powerful, and fast to allow for their dynamic planning environment. Now I'm gonna walk you through a tool that will enable you because of that, because it is easy, powerful, and fast. And that's Adaptive Insights, powered by Workday. Uh, let's start by talking about how easy it is. Since it's a cloud product, it's easy to get the product up and running. You don't need servers, you don't need uh, IT, you don't need any sort of hardware. Uh, you just you know, get the product, you get a website, and you log in with your email address. Uh, ADAPT is not just easy for you know, the administrators, it's easy for everybody who is in the planning process. So data entry is really easy because it can be done either through Excel or through the workspace, uh, any interface that the user wants to use. Um, since it's hosted in the cloud, it connects to either. The administrator is setting up a single template and it connects to both. Uh, it's also easy because it delivers results in any format you need it. That's online reports. Uh, it could be management report books, uh, any sort of board books or presentations you're doing. Uh, those can all be done with Adaptive and updated very easily with a couple clicks. Uh, they also have dashboards that make it very easy to analyze from a visual perspective uh, how you're doing or from an a uh, actual or forecast perspective. And it's all delivered on the platform of your choice. Uh, it's also powerful. Um, the formulas are written in plain words as opposed to cell references. So you can understand what's happening in any sort of the calculations that are in your model. Uh, the formulas can leverage data from anywhere in the model. So they can have supporting schedules, they can have assumption sheets, they can be fully interconnected to make truly driver-based models across the entire application. And you can analyze anything from anywhere. So from any spot in the application, you can click on a cell and drill into that number and figure out where it came from. Everything links together and you're able to see from the summary level down to the lowest level of granularity. You can even drill back into the source of data if you want to. Uh, this means you can drill in from a sheet, you can drill in from a report, or you can drill in from a dashboard. Anywhere you are in the application, you can always click, and that will make your every number reliable, trustworthy, and accurate. Uh, finally, Adapt is fast, which allows you to update your plan or adapt your process to a change in your business very quickly. Uh, it has an in-memory integrated platform that allows you to easily source data from any uh, system. Uh, that allows for collaboration uh, and they have process management capabilities so that users know what they're supposed to be doing and when they're supposed to be doing it to eliminate redundant processes in the system. Uh, so if you put a change in one area, you can easily see that in the report in the next second. There's no calculations in the background, everything's updated as people hit save and as the most recent data is input in the system. So it's those three characteristics, easy, powerful, and fast, that make Adaptive uh, the best choice for a dynamic planning software. Uh, with that introduction, let's head into the Adaptive environment and take a look at the tool. So today we're gonna to talk through three examples of dynamic planning, what a typical organization goes through uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, for this company, we're gonna say it's a you know, software sales company. Uh, we're gonna go through a couple examples, the first being uh, an end user is the Sales North manager. Uh, we're going to have them log into the system and show how they make an update to their budget. Uh, then we're going to see how an executive user can get self-serve answers to ad hoc questions. Uh, and finally, we'll see how a user can go in and update their report books all in a matter of minutes from a monthly close process. So for this first scenario, uh, say management has finished their first pass of the budget, um, but the market changes. So now all of a sudden they think there's a new opportunity in the North sales region. So they're trying to figure out what does it look like if we take advantage of this? So they've sent their sales North manager, uh, that's who I'm logged in as right now, uh, out to say, okay, how can we sell more in your region? Well, I know how I built my plan. So I'm gonna log into the system and I'm gonna open up my personnel sheet. I know that I've got good salespeople, and the best way to do that is to just move one of my hires I have planned for later in the year 
up till now. So here you can see we've got a sheet set up with all the uh, account executives I have in my region, uh, the North region. Um, and you can see at the bottom, I've got three new hires here. Uh, one in February, one in March, one in April. So let's just see what happens if I move this one up to the beginning of the year. Oh, sorry, not February. Let's go January 1st. First day of the year, I'm going to have that new hire start. So in the background, it just did a, all the calculations to uh, revenue, to cost of goods sold, to operating expenses. Um, and you can see here in the report, uh, we're comparing our budget pass one, so that's that snapshot that we just talked about, uh, with the working budget, which I'm updating, it's our continuous live budget process that we're always working on. And we can see by making that change, the net income has gone up 11%. So now in the system, I can put in a note to just say, net income increased 11% by moving new hire up to 1-1. One, one. This allows communication throughout the application, so everybody knows the change I made and they know why net income in my region went up 11%. Uh, you can also see that this is a fully interconnected model, um, so net income went up, cost of goods sold went up as well, um, even down to expenses where you can see you know, the IT allocation budget went up. You know, I moved someone forward, so I get allocated more of the IT account because it's based on headcount. Uh, with Adaptive, you get the ability to make a change and have that ripple through the entire system instantly. Uh, and like we mentioned before, it's possible both through the web or through Excel. So I can log into the Excel planning uh, tab and open up that SAMP sheet. Now it's going to take that template that was built in the web and just load it into my Excel workbook. So here I'll just add a comment. Moved higher up to 1-1 from 430. Make that change and I'll submit it and it instantly gets pushed back to my adaptive cloud environment. Uh, adaptive also has process management. So if your users aren't going in on a you know, weekly or monthly basis, they can have a guide to show them what they need to update every time they go into the system. So again, I'll go in and say my process is the Sales North plan. I'll come in, click on that, and I'll get information that you know, here is the employee roster that I need to fill out on a you know, continuous basis. And we can see that note we just entered in Excel made it up into the cloud. Now we're going to take this a step further. So that was the Sales North manager making the change. But now let's say I'm a power user. So I'm going to log out and log back into the system as someone who has access to the whole organization. And I'm going to open up that same report. So in that sales north territory, net inc income increased by 11%. But we can see as we get to the top level, that equates to a 0.1% change in my overall net income. Uh, with Adaptive Insights, you don't have to press any buttons to run a calculation. You don't have to check in a file or run any uh, you know, calculations or batch processes in the background. Every save uh, means that all the reports, all the forms, all the dashboards are all updated right away. Uh, so everything you're doing, you can get it on t done on time, and you can get it done right. Uh, you can also have comments in here so you can collaborate with teammates. Uh, all right, so, so far we've seen that you can make updates and have them flow through the system automatically uh, in an easy-to-use function. Uh, Adaptive is also very powerful, so you can analyze everything from anywhere. So for the second example, we're going to talk through an accounting close. Uh, where everything happens fast and you need to be able to rapidly analyze and reliably communicate to your partners uh, what's going on in the close process. Uh, and one of the biggest keys there is you need to be able to get self-serve answers. Uh, you can't be waiting for communications to go back and forth. You need to be able to drill into the data and see what it was that changed 
and why it changed. So now let's pretend we're an executive and we want to understand how the organization's performing compared to plan uh, you know, during a close process. Uh, so we're going to focus in two areas here. Uh, the first is expense and the second is going to be product revenue. So using Adaptive, it's easy to provide self-service reporting. I'm going to open up the report folder and you can see that you can build out your report layout to be whatever you need it to be for your organization. Uh, data remains safe because all users are assigned security access based on the levels they have, but also the um, level of information they should have access to. So for instance, if they need more access to view uh, salary information, that can be a different level of security access that users have as opposed to just a generic uh, expense or revenue uh, type user. Now we're going to open this report and take a look at how we're doing for expenses. Uh, note there's formatting in here. This whole layout, all of the coloring, all of the conditional formatting, uh, that's controlled by you as an administrator or even an end user. Um, this helps you identify exceptional performance, both good and bad. Uh, you can see we've got annotations. This allows you to communicate and collaborate amongst teammates. Um, you have the ability to add new notes. So I can click on this and add a line note if I wanted to as well. Uh, right now those notes are showing up as footnotes, but you have the ability to have them show up as footnotes, put them in the columns, or you can show them in line so that you can see where people are making notes, basis, the, the information it relates to. So as we're going through our analysis, we can see that other t &E is up a lot. So I want to drill into this. I want to figure out what's happening. So what I can do is just click on the other t and &E, and I get the option to drill in by all of the different dimensions that we have data by. Uh, for this one, I'm going to drill in by level so I can see down a level of the organization what's happening. Now it's going to take the levels dimension and put that in the rows. Now we're focused on the other t and &E, and we can see that Sales North has a large variance between the actual and the working budget. So if I want to look into this, I'm going to start by clicking on the working budget. And here I can see how that budget number was built. The formula is written in you know, plain names so that I can read what's happening. It's taking this account from the time period minus 12, so last year, and it's timesing it by the assumption inflation rate. Uh, down here you can see that formula again, and then you can actually see what that number evaluates to. So you can see that this was that account value last year. And this is the assumption inflation rate that we're working with. Clicking on either one of those will drill you through to that cell so you can see continue down that path of exploring where your numbers are coming from. So that budget number looks good. Uh, so let's look at the actuals. This 2.6 million clearly isn't right. So I'm going to click on this. Uh, and without having to drill into a different system, I can click on the transactions to figure out what went into making that number. And it's pretty apparent right away that there was some sort of an issue with this entry or this transaction that was logged in our accounting system. Uh, so I've got the answer to what happened, and now I can go talk to my accounting department and have them fix the transaction, and the next time the data loads, that will be updated in the system. Now I'm done with that expense analysis, so I'm going to take that report back to the original format we had it in. Uh, and then the second half of that question was we wanted to look at revenue as well. So assuming the user has the right permission, they can take any given report and modify it. So I'm going to add revenue to this report so I can make this both a revenue and expense analysis. Have it go right above operating expenses. Uh, and then I'm going to run that report. And now you can see it added product revenue to the top of the report. And again, I can continue my analysis and easily see that product group B has had exceptional performance compared to plan. Uh, as a user now, I could go in and save this as I want, if I want, um, as a shared report or a personal report, uh, assuming you have the right access to share, to save or share these reports. Uh, and again, you don't have to worry about anybody else seeing data they shouldn't. Uh, security is always handled in the background, 
Um, but if you want to add additional security, you can choose which folder and who has access to it. Those are all different layers of defining who can see what data, um, but you can rest assured that they'll never see more data than they should. All right, so now we've looked at some ad hoc analysis through reports, but I'll, let's also take a look through the dashboards. Sometimes it's easier to visually see trends and analyze what's going on through that. So now let's look at product revenue. And let's just say we're trying to make a decision about our strategy. So to inform that decision, we need to know what products we're selling and who's buying them. So I'll come into the dashboard and I'm just gonna drill down on our product revenue number. Uh, and let's drill down by product. So now I've got a chart set up to show here are the top products that are selling. Uh, hovering over it, I can see that product A1 is our biggest seller. Uh, and I can continue this analysis from here. So if I wanna drill in further, I can now drill in by customer. And we can see that for product A1, customer one is our top customer. But leads to another question. Is customer one the best customer or our biggest customer overall? I can stay in the same screen, click on this number again, and drill down by customer, and it starts a new drill path. Here you can see customer five actually is buying more than customer one, um, just not of that individual product we looked at before. From here, I can go back to my original dashboard. So as you can see here, there's a ton of different options you can have on the dashboard. You can have gauges, line charts, bar charts, uh, scorecards, you also have the ability to do pie charts, donuts, uh, or even waterfalls if you want. Uh, you can see it in the dashboard view, or you can flip over to presentation mode and use your keys to tab through it if you need to be highlighting this or showing this to different stakeholders. And anytime you find a number you want to learn more about, uh, you can click on it, explore the data to get more information on it, and you can even drill into any sort of planning sheet underneath the covers to get more detail about how that number was built up using your models or your actual data behind the scenes. All of that's available through quick uh, clicks all through the dashboard. So now let's take a look at how Adaptive can help us in a monthly reporting cycle. In the past, what you'd have to do is extract a bunch of data from a system, load it into Excel, uh, run some macros and hope that those don't break, uh, and then validate those numbers. Since you did your own data dump, you gotta make sure that whatever you put in your reports uh, is the same as what's coming out of the system. Uh, and you gotta slice and dice that to all your different reports, validate them, and then send them out for your management book. Uh, with Adaptive, it's easy to take any of those existing workbooks you have and link them in with the Adaptive uh, Link Smart Link technology. This works for any of your Microsoft Excel worksheets, any of your Word documents, or any of your PowerPoint presentations. Uh, and you can update it so that every month you just refresh and it loads the most recent data. So here we can see we've got a bunch of worksheets uh, with highly formatted reports. And right now they're all uh, locked in on February 2019. So now we want to update this for March. We're closing the month of March, so we want to update it for the current month. So we're going to go to the workbook properties, and you can see the current date in this report book. The last time it was saved was February 28th. So I'm going to update it till today, March 19th. And then I can come up and hit the refresh. And we'll update all sheets in the workbook to update to the March 2019 number. You can see it automatically updates the labels, it automatically updates the numbers, and you can refresh all the worksheets in just a click, couple clicks. Uh, so I mentioned before, you can take any existing worksheet and turn them into an adaptive connected sheet. So now I'm gonna show you how easy that is. So we can see here lines 14 through 18, these aren't connected right now. And how you can see that is there's actually an adaptive cells button up here that's going to tell you what is and what isn't connected. So anything in blue is going to tell you where the data in the worksheet is coming from adaptive. Anything in green is going to tell you that it's a label name that's linked to the adaptive cloud product. Again, everything's live. Everything's always connected. So you know you're always getting the most up-to-date number. Uh, it's all housed in the cloud. So um, 
you know, it's always up and running. Um, so let's add some accounts to this. So what you do is you just highlight the rows. And I'm going to highlight the accounts I want to link to them. And then just drag and drop. Now, if I hit refresh again, you can see those numbers are being fed through from the system into our worksheet. This makes updating management uh, decks or workbooks or end of the month PowerPoints a breeze. It takes a couple minutes, you change the date, you refresh, uh, then you're ready to distribute that uh, and, do, and begin your analysis. So we just walked through three examples of active planning that a typical customer goes through. Uh, with the adaptive suite, you have the ease, power, and speed to plan as a team and analyze everything from anywhere. Uh, and you can quickly adapt to changes in your organization. So this way you can get everyone in your organization heading towards the same goal of getting significantly better results in just a fraction of the time and effort. And with a dynamic planning process, you get the people who are most closely involved in on the planning process and you see their changes represented throughout the system as they make them. This allows you to really truly understand your organization and better adapt to changes. So, do we have any questions? Uh, if you have questions, there's, sorry, there's a Q&A box. Feel free to type them in. All right, got one here. Uh, how can adaptive insights be used for planning and functions outside of finance? Well, so first off, the adaptive platform allows for a ton of flexibility. So we looked through an HR model. Uh, that's built in the system, so you can obviously expand upon that and build in any framework you need. Um, it allows for any source of data, so not just HR data. You can also have, a, um, or sorry, not just finance data. You can have HR data, sales data, production or inventory, or even marketing data. Um, there's also different modules as well. So, for instance, there's a sales module now that allows you to plan, a, you know, a sales organization. So to connect to your you know, other sales systems, pull in your leads, and you can plan out, here's what my targets are for the year, um, and here's the, you know, sales reps I need to support that. Here's another question, David, we just got in. Um, how does ADAPT, what size organizations does ADAPT fit? Um, well, I, I think from what our experience has been, and um, ADAPT's experience as well, is that they, they are really able to um, support businesses from small businesses up to enterprise level. Um, I think there are changes and in investments they've made in their technology um, that I mentioned before when I said they've gone from a, you know, a startup or a, or, or a tier two or three player to a tier one solution is that they can scale uh, at that enterprise level. So business units, numbers of business units, numbers of functions, and that same rapid, fast response and that powerful engine, you know, happens. And so, what we're not seeing is is uh, is a scalability issue of any kind as it as it as, it, as you go up uh, in the size of your business. All right, that's all we have now. Uh, thank you guys all very much for attending, uh, and feel free to reach out to us um, through our eCapital website if you have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you all.